Oh man, I have a long view. Twelve hours. Oh, one more good sip of this stuff. That's the end of that. Time to hit some of this. Wait a second. What did I come across the screen? Oh, hello, everyone. Whoa, a little hydrating fluid there. I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. Remember, it's a red wine and pizza Friday. My favorite day of the week because it means it's almost the end. Except for this week because I have to go to work tomorrow and Sunday. And do ridiculous stuff. 12 hours on my feet. Ah, time to hulk up for that. But enough about that. Let's talk about some SmackDown. And wow. What a weird show this was. Weird in the way it wasn't necessarily bad. It was weird for a go-home show. Very little wrestling going on. They had two long matches. And listen, those matches are great, though. Everything else was just... Oh, wow. They had, like, four matches. Two matches were great. One was good. One was... And just a whole bunch of filler. Almost what you expect for a go-home show. So let's talk about this. So we start off the night SmackDown. Um, as a whole kind of recap between Roman Reigns and King Baron Corbin. Uh, the Usos, uh, Dolph Ziggler, and Robert Roode. So therefore, for the go-home show, we're going to get a six-man tag match. The Usos and Roman Reigns, who, by the way, gets the most pyro. I don't know. Taking on Baron Corbin. The glorious Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, for the most part, Dolph and, Us and the Usos star. I think this is Jimmy. Um, the Usos, they use it. You, they, la, la, la. they utilize their brotherly intuition and do some quick tags. Let me get just a little caffeine in my system. Oh, that's the good stuff. Cheap stuff is always the best. But again, they utilize their quick tags in and out. It makes sense. It's what every brother tag team has been doing since forever. And then Robert Roode, the glorious heel, comes in. He's just a little too powerful for them. And eventually, all six men wind up on the outside of the ring. Oh, that's not a good spot. And there's going to be one Uso short because one Uso takes a dive out of the ring, hurts his knee, but then the other Uso tells him to check his head. I don't know. Once I heard that, I'm like, ah, something screwy is going on. But the one Uso gets sent to the back for medical attention. Um, that leaves a two-on-three situation. Uh, Roman Reigns. He still needs to lose the vest because... Jay Uso has a good looking Maori style tattoo across the shoulder. I know Roman Reigns does too. But if he showed it off and not wear the vest, he wouldn't look so weak because he wears the vest and it's like nothing to the chest or, or getting a hit in the stomach should hurt. If you're wearing a vest like that, his bare skin would do him better. Uh, then Baron Corbin again, he dips six, he deeps, deep sixes on Jay Uso. <laughs> and that was a very this, oh he begins to dissect the whole six man notion again very slowly eliminating others um, again the Jey Uso gets kind of taken out because of all the beating he's taken and Reigns gets knocked off the apron but eventually later in the match Roman Reigns gets a hot tag then we have a super kick by Dolph Ziggler on Roman Reigns. Of course, Roman Reigns, he kicks out at two. Sweet. And then Rudin and Corbin, they double team outside the ring. Because, again, they can. It's a two-on-three situation. Smart heels. But, however, 
was the glorious DDT. Um, the Usos was smart enough to get out of that. And Jay, Jay was center over the table for his problems. However, Jimmy Uso miraculously comes black and starts flying. Again, flying all over the place with a big splash. Cross body press. Um, bearing Corbin. Again, got held down by the one Uso. Dolph Ziggler eats, I think it was Dolph Ziggler, ate a Jimmy Uso splash. Just like the Superfly Jimmy Snuka. I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. It had it ebbs and flows. It made sense. It didn't make anyone look super powerful. It also didn't make anyone look Weak. I mean, the heels did what heels did. They got rid of one, so it was a two on three. They used that advantage well. Again, the faces always tried their comeback. Of course, Roman Reigns, the greatest comeback person um, for a long time. It was really good. The Usos and Roman Reigns pick up the win. I was fully entertained by this match. It ticked all the boxes for me. This is a surf and turf match. Then we have a whole bunch of recaps. Oh, made this show feel longer. Um, there was a Kane and Fiend recap. Uh, Lacey Evans was doing a pinup photo shoot in the back. Little Bailey jumps. Carmel and Dana Brooke about give some interview or whatever. Dana Brooke needs to needs to date Hobo Tom. Yeah, I'm single too, Dana. Um, then eventually, <laughs> that which I do like the fact that WWE is doing this now that they're actually concerned with like storyline and oh cohesion. Um, during the interview, the Lacey Evans brawl with Bailey just poured back backstage. And of course, the cameraman man says, Who cares about you? I don't see these two women fight. It amazingly makes sense. And um, then we had a Daniel Bryan Fiend. Oh, no, wait, that's later. They've built up to that. Then we had Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss taking on fire. And boo, Sonya Deville. Or maybe that she's fire. Yeah, it was uh, Mandy Rose and boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. I will forever boo Sonya Deville until she starts to job out consistently. Like my princess, Kimberly. Um, it, this match barely started, and I'm kind of upset at this. Boo, Sonya Deville. It's all her fault. Um, but the Lacey Evans Bailey brawl starts to break into the ring. And of course, with that, you have Carmella and Dana Brooke, and then Nikki Cross. Oh, it's just as, as a to quote Simon Miller, a big smosh. They could have done so much with Nikki Cross, and even Boo Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. I, I really hate to do this, but that whole concept, that whole no contest baby, is the dust that hit it in the highest degree, is the piece of toast. That was terrible. They could have done so much better. Oh, well. And then we have Elias and Braun Strowman backstage. Elias is playing a song. And then, of course, he tells Braun Strowman to sing. Braun Strowman. Why is someone cracking that? It's not healthy. Um, and then, of course, to that, Shinsuke Nakamura. And Cesaro dare interrupt the singing 
the monster among men. Whoa. And this leads to an impromptu match here. So we have Elias and Braun Strowman. Take on Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. Um, for the most part, this was, this was actually a pretty short match. Um, they kept most of the wrestling time between the first match and the last match. And then, of course, we had what happened at the end, which was actually kind of cool. It's kind of old school. I like that. Oh, yeah, I like the old school. I don't do the old school enough. Yeah! Because I don't know if he's going to shake his hand or slap him in the face. Yeah! But, um, Sarah, I need to take a quick step after that macho man impression. Macho Man is still the best. Uh, so this match, Elias, for the most part, Elias in run of the upper hand. Elias says his rope rock. Wo yeah, rope walk. That five times fast. Kind of Undertaker style. Comes down onto the arm of Cesaro. Cesaro, for the most part, takes the beating. Um, Braun, again, he does his tackle to everyone. Eventually, Shinsuke Nakamura. Then shows off why he's the king of strong style. Cesaro. Shows off his strength. Again, you have the double team on Braun. Makes sense, though. Uh, Sami Zayn always tries to be the distraction. Eventually, there's a running power slam onto Cesaro, and then then Elias. Ooh, yeah, he climbs the top rope. Yeah! I know a wrestler that used to do that. I wonder who he was. Yeah! The macho man used to do that. And so that was really cool. And I just screwed up my camera, but that's okay. So this video is going to be all whacked out. But again, he dropped the macho elbow onto Cesaro. Cesaro eats the pin. Elias and Braun Strowman win. And I'm going to go back to my original thought. This really didn't do anything for anyone. This is a ham sandwich. That was, eh. Okay, whatever it was. It was a Daniel Bryan recap. Eh. Time to take a put some more beverage for that. Um. Let me just give kind of a whole general recap of the whole Royal Rumble stuff. It's okay, kind of like a history of the Royal Rumble. I guess we do that every so often. But fans kind of realize what happened during Royal Rumbles. That's okay. I think they do that too during WrestleMania, Survivor Series, and the other. And uh, SummerSlam. That's okay. But I'll tell you what, the match of the night, though, this was amazing. It was Kofi Kingston taking on John Morrison. Oh, yeah. Because he's John Morrison. He does things in slow mo. That's what's so great about John Morrison. John Morrison. Oh, dude, these two, they were just kicks from anywhere. It's amazing. Good, fast-paced match. Morrison, he picked up so much. It, Lucha Underground. I mean, I feel again, it hits the boom drop. They kind of hit their all their moves they're famous for. Again, the boom drop's pretty good. Um, Morrison did go for a dirty pin at one point. Biggie said, eh-eh. I'm not having any of that. Threw his feet off the rope. Of course, bring the Miz over to, to of course, incur Big E's ire. And then with that, uh, and Kofi was a little bit distracted. Morrison takes advantage. Oh, the straight to the eye. So good our heels when they do that, especially when it's well timed. And then oh, off the second rope, the move moves. The Spanish fly off the second rope. Oh, I wish I could. A moonsault's all I could do. But then um, that didn't finish off Kofi. He kicked out of that. Uh, Morrison beat him up a little bit more. 
Starship Pain! Oh, so good at Starship Pain. But that, uh, so John Morrison picks up a win over both New Day members. This time it's Kofi Kingston. Tell you what, this was a surf and turf match. If this was a pay-per-view match, oh, and it was a little bit better, a little bit longer, this might actually be a... F nope, it's just a surfing. Well, that leads us to the kind of the main event segment, um, Daniel and Bryan and the Fiend contract signing. This actually felt like it could, because one, Daniel and Bryan standing there in the ring waiting to sign. The Firefly Funhouse music kicks in, and you see... Bray Wyatt with an old school fax machine. Who uses fax machines anymore? Whoa. I bet you there were some people in the audience that said, Daddy, what is that machine? Son, it's called a fax machine. The only reason I know it, I used it when it first came out years ago. 20 years ago, it was the thing. Is that like before internet? Yeah. Well, we'll f that's right around the end of rotary phones. Daddy, what's a rotary phone? One day your mother will show you. Watch the show. Watch the wrestling show. So, yeah, that's how that goes. That was. Uh, and then, of course, so it's so a belt match. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Bray Wyatt was ridiculous because he did the dick wiggle with a belt. Oh, wait, I mean belt wiggle with a belt. That was just funny to see he shakes his hips like that. Like, oh, so good. So good as Bray Wyatt when, he, when he's allowed to be good. Uh, then... Yep, the course lights go off. The Fiend shows up, uh, beats up Daniel Bryan, hits Sister Abigail on Daniel Bryan, and begins to whip Daniel Bryan. He whips Daniel Bryan, to quote JR, like a government mule. And then he takes the pen. So again, as he's not happy just to have a normal pen, he takes that pen. Oh! Right through the hand. And signs the contract in his old blood. Wow. That harkens back to the days of The Undertaker, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, and Vince McMahon. Every so often when they do that, again, the nostalgia kicks in. And almost just like Ola. It's actually one heck of a drug, folks. Whenever you get nostalgic, that always makes you feel good. I'll tell you what, that was a weird go-home raw. Not necessarily bad, not necessarily something I don't want to see again. Very little wrestling. What little wrestling was was really good. Okay. So, like, why even bother? SmackDown just has you way too much on a roller coaster, folks. You had to do something with SmackDown. And then the good part is, after this little... Break! There's gonna be some 205 live action. Oh, yeah, some shout outs I didn't get to. So, again, hang on after this break, and I'll be right back. So, yes. Yep, there we go. My camera's just a little bit. Every so often it happens. I go too fast, it breaks. I those notes. But first, I have to start off this part of the show because I forgot. Let's see here, let me bring up some stuff here. Some shout outs to give, and I do apologize for getting these shout outs the second part. This is, I kind of came in two different times. So, it happens. Let's see here. 
Connor McDonald, thank you very much. I forget if you subscribed or left a comment, but whatever it was, thank you, sir. You, sir, are definitely listening to the Briefcase Boombox. Eating fish. Yes, that's right. Um, Jordan Devlin. Yeah, he was trained by by Finn Balor, and he's definitely the poor man's Balor. You sir, get a six count. And you, Sir Jay Tay, if I've given you this in the past, if I do, I apologize. I think you I think one or two more times you're gonna get your own character in the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. And I have to start thinking of what I'm gonna do for this one goes out to all the ladies for Valentine's Day. But you, sir, you got tossed. That's good. So I've made up for lost time. Oh, and I'm still doing pretty good time lines. So I do have to get to sleep soon. Let me take a little quick sip of cola. And let's talk about some 205 Live. 205 Live, the fact that it's not a go home show is actually fairly entertaining. I only have about three matches that only last about eh, 45, 15 minutes afterwards. Not too bad. So we start off 205 Live with. Arya Davari taking on Tyler Breeze again. I'm worried that 
it was going to be a 50-50 booking situation, but thankfully not. Tyler Breeze starts off really fast. Again, he, he uh, gets Ari Devari into the one ring. There's, of course, a 10 punches from the top turnbuckle, and somehow they wind up outside. And even on the outside, Tyler Breeze is taking advantage. However, Tyler Breeze realizes when you throw the opponent in, your opponent has a high ground Tyler Breeze. So once back in the ring, Ari Davari again starts to beat up. Poor Tyler Breeze kicks. I'll tell you what, that kick to the head by Tyler Breeze. Ooch. That looked like it almost connected, but Davari answers though. Again, both are true professionals. Um, the draping neck breaker across the second rope. Ari Davari did on Tyler Breeze. Ooh. So he had him in a neck breaker position, but it's between the second and third ropes, and then fell down, and the, like the neck went right against the second rope. I don't care who you are, that hurts. Um, Breeze again, the backdrop, Davari to the floor, which is pretty cool. Uh, Davari is a kind of like neck breaker sleeper thing. I don't get that. Cause, I mean, it hurts more just to be dropped on your back of your neck versus being kind of. Oh, my stretch out a little bit. It's almost like a neck crank in Jujutsu. In jujutsu. And then they both hit the crossbody, both thinking the same thing. Uh, eventually, again, Tower Breeze would go for the unprettier. But no, that was well scouted. Then Ari Davari tried to go for the hammerlock lariat again, well scarred, well scouted. Eventually, Ari Davari tried to roll up, but Tyler Breeze just sat on him. And the one, two, three. Tyler Breeze picks up the one. I'll tell you what, in a pretty entertaining match, get him. I'm happy that they're not doing 50 50 booking. That's a good sign. This is a piece of burger match. Then we had the Brian Kendrick versus two of Danny Birch. Oh, this is great. Danny Birch is amazing. He doesn't throw any fists. He throws good old-fashioned European uppercuts. But Danny Birch starts off with a running drop kick. I'm like, where is Oni Lorcan at? I don't think he's getting surgery for anything. I don't know. It just might be a sign to, to Tranquilo. You never know. And 205 is kind of limited with her time. I do wish they would showcase Oni Lorcan some more. He can just resign anyway for a fairly lengthy contract. I forget if it was three or five years. So we should see Oni Lorcan back sometimes. Um, then he did again the Luthes press and then just dropped the fist after the Luthes press. That was great. Um, the Kendrick, can he just. Whew, he drove Penny Bridges. I'm sorry, Brian Kendrick got his head driven to the steps. After a little bit, Kendrick recovers. Ties up Danny Birch into a side Russian leg sweep into the steps in the post. That, folks, is the true hardest part of the ring. There's zero padding on steel aluminum step. Or probably steel and or iron ring post. Zero padding. Ring apron. Padding, iron stuff. Step, nothing but metal, folks. That is the true hardest part of the ring. So when they say, oh, the apron's the hardest part of the ring. Ring post, steel steps, hardest part of the ring. All metal. Uh, then Brian Kendrick went for the Captain Sucks a couple times. Um, Second time, yeah, Ari Davari comes out, and I'll tell you what, he gets the dirty pin because Brian Kendrick rolls up Danny Birch. He puts his hands out over said referee. Referee's head's done. He can't see. Davari holds his hands. Brian Kendrick gets the dirty pin. I like that. It was a fun match. It was different. It was a cheeseburger match.
And then we have Leo Rush taking on Tony Nese, the premier athlete. Unlike me. Um, the trash talking starts off in the ring. Oh, so fun to see two wrestlers just trash talk each other. That's pretty good. Um, it's, it's, then it culminates in a shove and a slap. That's the way every wrestling match should start. And then it should properly start with a headbutt to the wrist. That's the way it should always go. And just watch hilarious videos. Always starts off with a headbutt to the wrist. Now, Rush is, he's so quick. I didn't know he could stop like that. I don't think I could stop like that. I'd probably trip over my own feet. I'd literally like a tibia and fibia, somewhat like Sid Vicious did, except for I'd be doing it by running versus jumping off the top rope. And probably the referee would laugh at me. My opponent would laugh at me. Everyone went ringside, ha ha, would laugh at me too. As I'm there writhing in pain. But Rush, he can be so quick, so agile, nimble. Uh, again, so many quick kicks from both. And they're both jawing back and forth. That was the, That's really the good part. And then there was an the Irish hammer. And I'll tell you what, Leo Rush got like whipped into that by Tony Nese. And wow, Leo Rush can sell that. That's great. And then some cheap slaps. By Leo Rush. Eh, 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 eh. And then a forearm to Tony Nese. Um, Leo Rush does go to the top rope. Yeah, and he's the high flyer. He should fly. Not against a stronger person, though, because Nice caught him and slammed him down. And for some reason, again, hey, it could just be Leo Rush. Nice is just that one step behind. It makes sense because Leo Rush is the man of the hour. Uh, Nice again, he did the double rope moonsault. Oh, so good. I don't know how they do it. I'd slip. I'd probably like rope myself. And what that means is that I'd fall. So, so here's like ring rope. Here, here's me. I'd go bounce. Oh, and I'd hurt myself in a place where men don't like to be hurt. Uh, there was a pump handle Michinoki driver. So good. Both eventually flop to the floor. Leo Rush gets tossed over the announce table. And because of that, because of that was at seven. Tony East gets in the ring. Eight. Nine. Ten. Oh. Tony East won by count out. It's actually been a while since I've seen anyone win by count out. I'm happy about that. I like to see people win by count out. It's a unique way, especially if you're the heel. It's, it is the heel way to win. I'll tell you what, this match was also fun. This is another cheeseburger match. And I have to get to sleep, folks. So tomorrow there's going to be no review. I'll figure out what happened. By videos, I'll post them a little bit probably Monday. Again, I'll, I don't know what happened for NWA pay per view tonight. I have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow night. I've already given, or I've had Dr. Tom come I mean, in and give us a prediction, so I'll hold him more so to the Royal Rumble. You gotta remember, he can either be in Stephanie McMahon's head, Vince, Vince's head, Triple H's head, or if he's really bad, he's either a 50 50 booker. Just a normal mark, or he could probably care less. Well, all being said, everyone have a good night. Bye. Oh, yeah, don't drink and